The fall theater season has just begun here in New York, and already there is a smash musical on Broadway. It deals with such traditional values as honor thy father and thy mother, and the sanctity of long-term monogamous relationships. There is just one little hitch, however, and Barbara Walters is here to tell us about it, and about the man who wrote the musical. Barbara? Well, Hugh, the one little hitch is that in honor thy father and mother, mother is a man, because the parents in this monogamous relationship are homosexuals. The theme provided the basis of a delightful movie, La Cage au Faux, and now it's produced by Alan Carr, a delightful and in every sense gay musical. Surprisingly, it's the kind of show that even grandma and grandpa would love. That's because its author believes in the family traditions. His name is Harvey Firestein, and with this success, he's become Broadway's newest celebrity. Uh, he is, to say the least, an unlikely celebrity. Harvey Firestein, 29-year-old homosexual playwright, actor, two-time Tony winner, and just until a few years ago, earning his living as a drag queen, a man dressed up as a woman. At the age of 13, his middle-class parents from Brooklyn knew for certain that he was gay, a homosexual. And by the time he was 15, he was performing as a transvestite. Husky-voiced and deliberately outrageous, he became an off-Broadway cult figure. But it wasn't until his semi-autobiographical drama, Torch Song Trilogy, which he wrote and starred in, came to Broadway a year ago, that his message came into the mainstream. David is gay! But he's only been here six months! <laughs> he came that way! His message? That homosexuals are human, just like the rest of us. And in one part of the play, Harvey plays a very human drag queen. With a voice and a face like this, I've got nothing to worry about. I can always drive a cab. <laughs> Torch Song was the first openly homosexual play ever to make money on Broadway. I think my biggest problem is being young and beautiful. <laughs> this year, it's La Cage au Faux, a giant hit. So just, if we please you, that's the way to show us. Just, cause you love us, won't you get to know us? It's a traditional Broadway spectacle, with music that you remember, dazzling costumes, and to the delight of the sold-out crowds, a visual guessing game. Men dressed up like women. But it's also a wonderfully sentimental love story about a pair of lovers who have been together for 20 years, just like husband and wife. The only thing is, they're both men. In this number, reminiscing about when they first fell in love. And I'm young and in love. Oh, George, you play my heart like a concertina. When I'm not here, and then if I come... With two hits on Broadway, Harvey and I met on the stage of his first triumph, Torch Song Trilogy, and talked about his work and himself. La Cage au Fond says that, look, you can have a homosexual couple who love each other, who can live together for years and years, who can have commitment, who can have all the things that we have come to think of as only heterosexual property. Right. Well, those are not heterosexual experiences and those are not heterosexual words. Those are human words, love, commitment family, belong to all people. Is it rare to have these kinds of long relationships? No, no. It's the norm. It is the norm in the homosexual community. It is not the norm in what you see on the news and all that, but what you see on the news and what you see in print are the bars. I mean, the, the obvious things that you can shoot. You don't break into people's homes and shoot this happy lesbian couple that's been, you know, the two of them have been living together for 70 years. You don't shoot that because you're not going to go break into their house and shoot them. They don't go to bars and they, and you'd never notice them on the street. So monogamy as, as monogamy. is as prevalent. Monogamy is as prevalent a disease in homosexuality as it is in heterosexuality. It's all the life choice that you make for yourself. We all have the same problem. Do we? Yeah. What's sure. it like to be a homosexual? You do have the easy ones, don't you? What is it like? What's it like being a heterosexual? I don't know. I'm just a person. 
I'm a person who sees the world in the opposite light than you do. That's all. Uh, but I see the exact same world as you do. I assume that everyone is gay unless I'm told otherwise. Uh, you assume everyone's straight unless you're told otherwise. I see a beautiful woman on the street. I appreciate her as a beautiful woman, but not as a sex object. Do you feel jealous of her? Why would I feel jealous of her? Because she might be after the same man. Or, or he no, be I'm, I'm, I'm not attracted to heterosexual men. Harvey, what do you think homosexuality comes from? We used I, to feel, and maybe we still do, it's the over-domineering mother and the weak father. Right, well, that's, that's got to be garbage. I what mean, do you think it is? Well, I mean, I, I grew up in the same household as my brother. My brother is straight, and I'm not. Um, you think it's chemical? Uh, yeah. Do you think that environment has anything to do with it? No. No. No, otherwise you wouldn't have it in every single culture, in every village, in every mm -hmm. town, in every mountain cabin. You would not have 10% homosexuality. I mean, you have to, you have to start from the, the basics. 10% okay, of basic. the world is gay. Is it really? So you've got to stop with the, this is a sickness, this is an abnormality. This is a normal thing that has gone on through the history of man. It has always been 10% of the population, has never been bred out. If it was a abnormalcy or whatever, it would have been bred out through natural selection. Now, our problem with homosexuality is that it is invisible. Most gays are invisible. Most gays are not like me, an effeminate male. I mean, you can pick me out as being gay. Most gay men, you can't. Most gay women, you can't. And it is a lot easier for a gay man who is a really invisible gay man to stand in a room full of execs all laughing about the, the, the homo down the hall um, to just laugh along than for him to stand up and say, excuse me, I happen to be gay and you've just offended me or to go home and tell his parents that he's gay. Unless we are liberated in ourselves and accept homosexuality ourselves and demand our respect, straight people will never see that gays are teachers and lawyers and policemen and firemen and garbage men and, and everything else. When did you know you were gay? Um, at the time when I first got involved in sexuality, in my mind, maybe five years old. What did you think? Um, I thought I was coming out with the wrong answers. Gay children go through exactly what straight children do. You explore the world until you find your place in it. And what happens with a gay child is the gay child goes through all those steps, comes out with the wrong answer. I grew up watching old movies and I looked at Gone with the Wind and I saw Clark Gable and I said, I am attracted to Clark Gable. So that left one answer. I was Vivian Lee. And so I might have taken on those characteristics of the effeminate because that was the only role model I have. What did you tell your parents? We never sat down and discussed it. I was who I was and began acting on it and just went along with it. It was a gradual discovery of who I was They never. Them. You never said to your mother or father, look, I'm not going to have a girlfriend. Look, I'm not oh, going to yeah. get married. Oh, yeah, a thousand times. I mean, last week. I mean, that's, that's a never-ending battle. It's, it's just like uh, a woman who goes home and says, look, Ma, I'm living with the guy, and I'm not going to marry him. I mean, do you think the mother's going to stop asking when you're going to get married? No, it, it, that goes on every day. That's, that has nothing to do with being gay or straight. That's his parents and children. Harvey, your mother still doesn't think you're going to get married. As, as the mother in Torchland says, you never know. You, ne you meet a nice girl, you so never changing. know. Why didn't, I mean, one would expect her to say, oh my God, don't worry about me, I'll put my head in the oven. Um, I had been brought up to be what I was going to be. And, and my mother knew that after the upbringing I had, she had a choice, accept me or lose me. If there are parents watching tonight, and a son or daughter comes and says, I am what I am and I'm a homosexual, what do you say to the parent to help to help them accept it? I, what I say to parents that come to me is I say, would you rather that, first of all, you raised a child that could not love, that would spend his or her life alone? Because if you don't know about their homosexuality, it's not going to stop them from being homosexual, but you'll never know about it. And you will have raised a child whose love you will never be able to share, whose life you will never be able to share because they will not share with you openly. A few years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do an interview like this, probably, and put it on, on the air. It would have been, but this is not the subject one talks about. So things You happen. could have done it. 
You would have had to fight your senses and all that, but you could have done it and you should have done it. You know I am not the first gay star of a Broadway show. You know I'm not the first gay writer of a Broadway show. It is such a ridiculous position. You're the first openly gay. Yeah, but isn't that ridiculous? I mean, isn't it totally ridiculous that I'm getting all this attention because I'm the first openly gay? You know how many gays. You know that the women in your audience are sitting out there and they go to see movies and they're dying over these gorgeous men. You know they're gay. And to the person watching tonight who says, that's disgusting, she's encouraging it, or, or how dare you put this on the air? What's your answer? The frightening part, for, to me, of people like that is that they haven't opened themselves up enough to their own family to see the gay members of their family right in their family. I've never heard of a family without a gay member in it. Never. There's always a gay member, a gay cousin or something down the line. Um, and that person who's sitting there going, this is disgusting and they should all be put in ovens or they should all, you know, do what you want as long as I don't have to hear about it because they've closed off their hearts to the stranger. They've closed off their heart to somebody right in their own family. They'll never know who that person is. In La Cage Fold, the big number that closes the first act is when the transvestite, having been rejected, comes out and sings. Well, they, they tell him they don't want him. Yeah, and he says... And he says, I am what I am. I don't want praise. I don't want pity. I bang my own drum, some think it's noise, I think it's pretty. There's one life, and there's no return and no deposit. One life, so it's time to open up your closet. Life ain't worth a damn till you can say, hey world, I am what I am.